This week on Conundrums, we're in Mexico to talk to one of Mexico's most respected UFO researchers. Jaime Massan is next on Conundrums. In 1991, Mexico City was inundated with UFO sightings. Jaime Masson was one of the few broadcasters who took the subject seriously and reported on all of the sightings throughout Mexico. Jaime Masson is our guest this week on Conundrums. This was uh, July 1991. We had a total solar eclipse, and the people went out to record the eclipse. But instead of that, they recorded UFOs. There were so many videos that uh, I thought that was important to present them in the television. And from then on, I kept receiving videos almost every day. And at the beginning, were hundreds. I, I don't want to exaggerate, but I received so many videos, so many stories. Uh, then uh, somehow, at that moment, I was a journalist for 60 Minutes in Mexico. I was the anchor of that show. Uh, but people wanted me to investigate this. And then I received many invitations from universities, uh, from institutions that wanted me to talk about, uh, to present uh, the results of the investigation. And soon I was identified with this phenomenon and I was trapped by, by then. Somehow, uh, my investigations, my journalistic investigations diminish, but the, the UFO investigations increased. So have you now like made a business out of this, out of, out of doing no, only uh, I, I programs? I don't consider it a business, yes. Mm -hmm. it, it is a business because mm -hmm. there is no other way to survive. Right. Any investigator that uh, doesn't have the meaning, uh, the, the ways to survive, to receive the money, mm -hmm presenting this work uh, won't be able to do it for a long time. Right. Then you have to find the ways to make money. And there are not so many who have done this in, in this area. You know, mm -hmm. that's very unfortunate because right. I, I've seen many good investigators disappear uh, or they need to do something else because they cannot live from this. And mm -hmm. many are completely broken because they decided to, to, to get related to this phenomenon. Then. Through my conferences, now through my television show, yes, I've been able not to make huge, huge quantities of money, as mm -hmm. some people presume, but to make enough money to survive. Right. Of these um, videos that you've received, um, is there any one particular one that you, you find the most amazing or the most well, fascinating? There are many. I, I, there are many. At this time, I cannot say mm -hmm. this one is the most important one. Right. There are many important videos like those recorded by Antonio Ursi in Milan in Italy. They are so clear, so close. Mm -hmm. The ones recorded by Jalcin Jalman in, in Kumburgas in Turkey. That's uh, also amazing because you can see the creatures outside the craft. Mm -hmm. um, there are many important videos and there are many important cases too. And so you're receiving videos not only from Mexico but all over the world all now. All over the world, yes. And from is your China, from Italy, yeah. yes. Is your program seen uh, worldwide, or is it seen just within Mexico? Uh, well, it's seen in Mexico, but through internet, uh, we present right. uh, and we have uh, mm -hmm. a section with subtitles in English, and then people can follow me in the mm -hmm. in the United States too. All righty. I have also a television show in the U.S. and a very small network, uh, LATV, <gasps> which is uh, national in the U.S. and uh, we've been very, very successful there because we have kept the number one in the ratings for one year. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, also very important for us. And um, recently though, you've done a lot of research into the creature of Metepec. Yes. Can you tell me about that? Well, yeah, in, uh, back in uh, June, the end of June 2007, I received uh, in my offices, not this one, because they, it's a newer, I received uh, some people who wanted me to, to they wanted me to present uh, 
uh, this creature mm -hmm. who was dead, mm -hmm. I thought was a monkey. I didn't put too much attention, but uh, I asked one of my reporters to start the investigation. Mm -hmm. uh, as we were doing this, uh, the owner of this ranch, the man who brought the creature to me, was murdered. Then I decided to stop the investigation because I didn't know what was happening, and I presented this until probably January or February 2008. But somehow I attracted the attention of the Japanese, and a Japanese crew right. came to Mexico in December 2008, and that's when I really started the uh, investigation because I learned that the creature, that there were some pictures of the creature alive. And when I saw that, wow. it's when I really understood that this was not a monkey, mm -hmm. this was something else, this was something unknown, and I decided to start a full investigation and that's what I've been doing for the last uh, year and a half. Yeah, because I've seen the photos too, and the hands look, look very human, the feet look very human. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But the scientists don't want to accept mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to accept that the photographs were taken with the creature alive. We have at, at least four people who saw this creature alive uh, who have declared this mm -hmm. to, the, to the cameras, to, to the television. And even though, uh, and even though I had investigators from Europe, mm -hmm. from a university in Europe, they are still saying that uh, this is probably a monkey or something that can be explainable. Well, now Japanese television, their crew didn't they do a DNA on it and said that they thought it was no, human? No, I've done at least six analyses in DNA. Uh huh. The History in, Channel did one also. Uh, and the the, the Japanese uh, haven't done this. Mm -hmm. The ones who did it were the people from History Channel, and yes. they did it in Canada, mm -hmm. and they couldn't find anything. And I haven't found anything in any DNA, uh, and it's not explainable because when you mm -hmm. look at the cells, you can see a nucleus inside the cell. Right. And if there is a nucleus, there is there DNA. Exactly. Then it is not the, the explanation that they give uh, that this is the greater that they. No, it's not for real. Uh, probably they they haven't done. Uh, the analysis the way it should have been done because they haven't considered this to be a creature right. probably that is from somewhere else, you know. But there are enough analyses and I can tell you that in just one of them we found that the creature was human. Hmm. And this is something that uh, this university in Europe found and that is why the scientists came from Europe in January 2010 mm -hmm. And so far, they haven't finished their investigation. I think they are afraid. At this moment, I can tell you they are afraid of their own findings. Why would that be? Why would they? Oh, because be they have to declare that this is unexplainable. <laughs> right. And when they say that, everybody's going to be against them. And every, now, exactly. now they have to defend themselves. And then they prefer just to avoid that and say, oh, this should be a monkey. This should be some, but they don't prove it. Exactly. And at this moment, anybody who wants to talk about this creature has to demonstrate, because we have, uh, you know, we have contact no less than 10, 15 scientists of different mm -hmm. specialties to really try to, to get the truth out of this uh, case. Uh, and we have enough evidence that proves that this creature is absolutely unexplainable. There is going to be one day that the world is going to really learn about this incredible case. Exactly. What do you personally think it is? Do you think it's extraterrestrial? Uh, I don't think it's an extraterrestrial that came in a, in a, in a craft or mm -hmm. was driving a, you know, a machine yeah. or something. It's very small. I mean, it's, it's very a very small, small thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks more like an animal, mm -hmm. but at the same time, an animal that is not from this world. Yeah. Then I cannot tell you where it came from, what, as a, a parallel universe, a whole, as a dimensional whole. Mm -hmm. Many people claim that there are things like, for example, the so-called chupacabras that came from mm -hmm. a, a different dimension. Mm -hmm. Things like that. I don't know. I cannot tell you what it is, you know. It's a mystery. It's a conundrum. It's absolutely a mystery. But mm -hmm. I think uh, it's a mystery that should attract the attention of the science, mm -hmm. the scientists, because this is... Very exciting.
So if, uh, if scientists wanted to uh, take a look at it, uh, would you you'd be absolutely, open to let them? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm we, I am asking them to go. Yes. We found that, for example, the inner ear is very sophisticated, nothing related to a primer, you know, nothing yeah. like that. Uh, and there are enough, uh, the, the cells reveal that this uh, creature couldn't stand oxygen or water. Then where it came from? If it cannot stand oxygen or cannot stand water, it has to be from a different dimension or something like that. Yes. It, it's enough to, to really attract someone who has the courage Mm -hmm. Really to investigate. And, and how was it? How was it caught? How was? How did they? With a trap, get it? a rat mm -hmm. trap, mouse trap. Yeah, that's the way they did it. It's mm -hmm. small, and uh, they kept it in that for a year and a half until I obtained that. Uh, we have to pay money for this. Mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine, uh, John Rao, and myself uh, invested in this, and uh, we are the owners now of this creature. But. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, it took us a while, really, to start the investigation. Mm -hmm. In that area, has have there ever been sightings of others like it? Yeah, at least two others. So one of them was found dead without head. Mm -hmm. uh, this was kept uh, with this uh, body creature, mm -hmm. uh, but the other disappeared. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows why, but I think one of the employees there stole it because he probably thought that was... Uh, a very valuable thing, you know. And, right. And there was another sighting of a bigger creature, probably 60, 70 centimeters, that's, um, I don't know, 20 inches or so. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it was no trap, uh, uh, but it was very impressive for the people who saw it. And it was right. just around the, time, the same time when this uh, was captured. Well, these these creatures don't have hair like a monkey, so they no. they have skin. What was the the skin like? Was it like human or? No, it looks like a, mm -hmm. like a sea mammal, like a dolphins, uh, ah. with uh, some kind of lubri mm -hmm. lubrication or something like that. Yeah, it's interesting a, creature. Very interesting. Very interesting. Very fascinating. It's a fascinating case. Mm -hmm. Um. As far as Mexico, getting back to UFOs, as far as Mexico, is Mexico more uh, open to release UFO information? I don't think, uh, I don't think that, but I think Mexico South is not uh, blocking information either. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, they gave me a video, the military gave me a video. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think I know why, because I gave them incredible information of a very secret case in 1959, Mexico helped uh, NASA and the CIA to, stole, to steal the, the secrets uh, from the Russians uh, to go to space. Mm -hmm. And I gave the president all this information and that's why I, I think I received uh, this incredible video. Now, this is Nobody the, knows about this, but yeah. <laughs> it's true. Now, this is the uh, the lights. The, there were lights. That the were lights uh, were... Uh, this was night vision? It was night vision? It was night vision, mm -hmm. but it was in daytime. Uh, this is the, the FLIR camera. Yes. Which is used to track uh, narcotics or airplanes with narcotics from the south. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the way they found this. Where they couldn't see with their own eyes. And, uh, there are many other examples now. The, of infrared cameras that have been able to, to obtain images of things that people don't see. Exactly. We are going to present a special program about these invisible UFOs, mm -hmm. where we are going to prove that many times you don't see them with your eyes, you need a special camera to see them. You've done a lot of work with NASA footage of looking at, oh, at yeah. UFOs and oh, that. Yeah. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, well, we when there is a mission, we record Mm -hmm. hundreds or thousands of hours uh, of these missions uh, mm -hmm. the whole mission complete then we review the the video and we can we have been able to find incredible images uh, i don't understand why the american media is not doing this mm -hmm. i don't understand why not almost nobody else is doing this Mm -hmm. But we do it in every mission and we have told everyone to do this because they would obtain exactly the same images. images. Yes, you have to work a lot because you have to be there to record uh, 
every single hour, and then you have to review mm -hmm. every single hour, every single minute or every single second. Mm -hmm. But then you are going to have incredible material uh, that proves exactly. that uh, in the space they are following us, they are chasing us, they are making warnings, giving warning to us, and I think uh, that's very interesting, especially when you can demonstrate that and the video is official, then nobody's going to be able to tell you that this is a fake or something like that. Why do you think the United States media will not... Uh I don't know. Yeah. That's a very You're, good question. As a broadcaster, you have no, no idea. No, they maybe. should be doing this. They should be, yeah. They should be doing this. It mm -hmm. doesn't cost them anything. I mean, mm -hmm. if you are ABC, CBS, NBC, you will say, oh, record the whole thing, and that's mm -hmm. it. And then you review that, and then but probably they don't want problems. <laughs> yeah. You can do that because it's for free. It's a public uh, material. It's, uh, it doesn't have rights. Right. Then they they could do it, but probably they don't want uh, they don't want problems. What is your um your take on the um the Mayan calendar, the 2012 um, idea that you know there could be world changing events on that date? Do you well, feel that there will be? What we know, what we know is uh, we know that there is a calendar, and this calendar is twenty five thousand six hundred and twenty five years. Mm -hmm. And we know that it's been divided in five different different cycles. Mm -hmm. Every one of 5,125 years, that's a fact. Right. And we know that this last calendar is going to end on 2012, the 21st of December. That's also a fact. Mm -hmm. And that there is nothing written after that. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, many people think that that's the end of the world. I cannot tell you exactly if uh, the Mayans knew mm -hmm. that every 5,000 years there was a, a catastrophe or something like that. And we don't know that because the oldest Maya that has been found, it is from 1500 BC, mm -hmm. which means that the whole Mayan civilization would have last probably 3,000 years to Mm -hmm. 1500 uh, after Christ, mm -hmm. then uh, how could they have calendars of 5,000 years? Uh, or probably is because uh, they come from a different civilization. Yes. That's a probability. Mm -hmm. And But then we enter the field of uh, speculation. Right. If we speculate, uh, we know that uh, 5,200 years ago, there was a big climate change. Mm -hmm. And we know that because the uh, snow that is melting in the top of the mountains in the and uh, Andes, in the South America, under that snow, uh, you can find uh, plants, uh, green plants, and plants that were from uh, swamps or from uh, almost a tropical uh, mm -hmm. uh, kind of weather. Then uh, something happened overnight, uh, and all this snow was concentrated there for 5,000 years. Now it's melting, and now we know that something extraordinary happened around that time. Mm -hmm. We also know, because we have found uh, enough images that uh, tell us that probably around 10,000 years ago, uh, cities uh, between Mexico and Cuba uh, sunk on the on the ocean floor. Mm -hmm. uh, they have found ruins 600 meters below the the surface of the sea between Mexico and Cuba. Mm -hmm. uh, it means that something extraordinary happened, probably around 10,000 years ago. That would give you two clues that probably would, if we, wa if we want to speculate, that would tell us. Mm -hmm. that, yes, every 5,000 years there is a big change. Mm -hmm. uh, people think that every 5,000 years we have a, uh, a polar, uh, magnetic uh, polar switch. Mm -hmm. And that changes the whole thing. Probably it's true. Mm -hmm. But, and this happened uh, exactly every 5,125 years. Mm -hmm. We know that the sun is very exact in the cycle of 11 years. Every 11 years we have a uh, uh, maximum solar, a solar maximum, mm -hmm. and that happens every 11 years. But uh, and that, then we know that there are cycles which are very exact. 
if this cycle of the magnetic uh, shift is exact, then we will see something extraordinary in 2012. However, I don't think there is enough evidence for people to be afraid, to right. be scared. Mm -hmm. I think uh, most of the possibilities is that nothing is going to happen. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, what I see is a big change in the mind of the people. Mm -hmm. I see a change here, more here, more in the inside than in the outside. People are ready for something extraordinary. Right. People are ready for something incredible to happen. And that's what really should interest us. You know? Do you think we're building up to that now? That Absolutely. We're coming closer and closer? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. People would say it's the, the vibration of the planet probably is the vibration of the mind of the planet, which mm -hmm. is us. Right. And that mind is vibrating at this moment. Uh, and we want something different. And we are ready to accept it. And we are ready to make a sacrifice. Uh, and I believe there are other intelligences on Earth. I mm -hmm. believe that that's, for me, is a fact. Mm -hmm. For me, it's not a speculation. For me, it's absolutely real. Right. For me, these creatures, these beings, are trying to communicate with us. They are doing that in England, in the crop circles. And they are doing that in the world with the signs in the sky. Mm -hmm. If you see how many there are, you wouldn't believe it. All the investigation, all the images, all the evidence we have now to prove that it's not just on the ground, but also in the sky where we are receiving these signs. And if they are trying to communicate, probably they know exactly uh, that we are building to that change and they know exactly what it means, the 2012 event, and probably they will use that to present themselves. Yes. That's a possibility. Uh, but I, I, I want to be do you, think, you know? do you think that UFO disclosure would come from a government announcement or it's going to come from something they do? No, it's from them. It's, the government, the United States government is not willing to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. We know that for sure. And it's not the government, it's not the president, it's the military. There is a force inside the government of the U.S. who doesn't allow this, this kind of things to happen. You know? They mm -hmm. control it from uh, September 24, 1947, when uh, Harry Truman signed this document saying and declaring that this, uh, the UFO phenomenon was on national security. It has remained that way for so many years, and I don't think that's going to change, not from them. Yeah. Do you think another country might would step forward and release information that they have, sort of trump oh, the U.S.? That's happening. Yeah. And Russia is willing to open more and more, and, uh, and now we know that England did it, and we know that France did it, and now in Argentina there is a promise of the president to release these and it's happening in Ecuador, it's happening in Peru, it's happening in Brazil, and many other countries. And now the formations in the, of the crop circles are not just in England, in Germany and Italy. Italy has many this year, and some of them really beautiful, and Germany too. Mm -hmm. And you have uh, some formations in Czechoslovakia, and you have in, in Russia or Switzerland. It means that the phenomenon is growing, uh, mm -hmm. this possibility of communication or to, or giving us science is now uh, better than ever. Uh, and for that reason, I think that, yeah, they are, this uh, momentum is, is growing. Uh, probably in two years, we'll be ready, and they will be ready to have yeah, a I, big I was, demonstration. I was going to ask if you could venture a guess. How long do you think it will be? Uh, it's very difficult. Yeah. <coughs> probably 2012, probably mm -hmm. 10 more years. It's up to them. Uh, there is secrecy, but they are also responsible for this secrecy because mm -hmm. probably they don't want to disturb human beings. And uh, the extraterrestrials, um, do you think there's more than one race? Yes, absolutely. How many do you think there I are? Don't know. No. no, no, but uh, because of the many credible witnesses that we have been able to interview, mm -hmm. we know there are uh, different ones and with, uh, besides different interests. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think every one of them is connected. I don't think every one of them has communication and knows what the other are doing. But I know that there are universal principles, universal laws, and everyone has to respect that. Mm -hmm. And that's what is common from all of them. 
is the the way to behave. It's like uh, humans with the law on, on earth, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's why sometimes, somehow, for, for example, they don't present themselves because probably it's a law. Mm-hmm. We, they cannot force their presence in any planet that hasn't accept this possibility. And since a planet Earth still has not accept that we are being visited, mm-hmm. probably they, they don't have the right to come down. Have you worked with abductees or interviewed a abductees? Little bit, mm-hmm. A little bit. A little bit. Is there any particular case that, that, that stands out? Well, I just uh, made two investigations, uh, one from Stan Romanek mm-hmm. in Colorado, an incredible case. Incredible case. I just presented in my television program, and there is another one, uh, Ron Noel. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was he had an implant, and we struck that implant, and the implant was uh, really truly really amazing. Mm-hmm. This implant was transmitting to the outside world. Uh, it had a lot of energy and was very very small, uh, around three four millimeters, mm-hmm. which is really really slow uh, small. But they had more half of the energy of a big camera that we use for television, uh, and with that you can compare how much energy this little piece had compared to the big instrument that we were using. Did they do an analysis on Absolutely, it? Absolutely. What yes. did what did they determine that it was made out of? Uh, we haven't finished that analysis. What we know it had nerve nerval tissue. Uh, nerves around the object, the mm-hmm. object, uh, but the, the the skin grew from the metal, mm-hmm. from the object, not from the patient, not from uh, Ron Noel. It grew from the object. How can you do that? Yeah, that's that's amazing. And that's that's also a fact. That's physical evidence. Uh, when right. you have physical evidence, it's very difficult to debate or refute that. Exactly. And how did you come to, to know about this case? Did he come to you? No, the, a friend of mine, uh, Roy Lear, uh, uh, who is the leader expert in this field, asked me if I could help uh, financing uh, the, the surgery of this case. And uh, I did it, and I asked another television station, Telemundo, to, to pay half of it. And, uh, and we were able, because uh, it costed us uh, some money, I, I'm not saying extraordinary, but around uh, $20,000, and mm-hmm. that was a lot for a single crew to, to a single program to, to right. finance that, just that. Um, his abduction, why do you think abductions happen? Why do they put implants in people? Oh, because they want to know, mm-hmm. because they want to follow, they, because they want to investigate, because they want to experiment, mm-hmm. because they need us for some reason to do things, you know. Uh, what do you think those reasons are? Uh, well, in the case of uh, uh, Romanek, probably hybridization. Mm-hmm. Uh, we now know that probably he has uh, descendants with them. Ah. And it's something that now is being investigated, and uh, that's also, it looks like sci fi, but right. uh, it's an incredible case. That's a good reason to do it, uh, because also they probably al- they need also to do that because uh, they are so old that probably they need some refreshment in the, in mm-hmm. the, in the blood. I don't know. So they need some new DNA or something. But of they that they are scientists. They investigate. Yes. And they mm-hmm. do that to know to to know more, mm-hmm. and we are very good subjects probably. Right. Let's go back to the uh, the. Uh, uh, Mexico City, uh, I'll call it an invasion, because in 1991, there were multiple UFOs seen here. Uh, How did that affect uh, the the general public? I mean, was it just astonishing for them, or were they... No, it was joy. It was? In in January 1st, 1993, there was a massive sighting in Mexico, and there were people all around the streets looking to the sky. It was like a party, a big celebration, you know? Yes. And uh, I can tell you that we have never been afraid of them. Um, we have a very good attitude here. Yes. And I can tell you that the, even though it's not the same, the same number we had in 91, we still have a lot of uh, sightings in here. Just one very in, in interesting last Sunday. Mm-hmm. This oh. last Sunday, yeah. And you're, you're still getting videotapes still oh, yeah, coming yeah, in yeah, yeah, yeah. 
from, from the public? All I work is with evidence. I am a journalist. Mm -hmm. I, I, I need hard evidence and uh, right. I need that. I mean, uh, my line of investigation is uh, I need something to stand on uh, mm -hmm. and I need proof. Do you feel like you have enough proof now? Are you you're still looking for more proof? Uh, it's never enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's never enough. You also all the time need more proof and more proof because not all the people believe in this. And I'm not doing this to make people believe. But I, I want to I want to be a good investigator and I want mm -hmm. to give them the evidence and let them decide because uh, in my case I saw two creatures in '99. Uh, in uh, in the Rumorosa Sierra, and for that reason, for me, uh, this is not a mystery anymore. Okay, tell I me about that story. I want to hear that. About well, the, I was side. making an investigation. Three little boys went to the woods, not to the woods, to the mountain, mm -hmm. a deserted mountain uh, between Mexicali and uh, Tijuana, which is between Calexico and uh, San Diego. And they 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 lost their way back, and they had to start to stay in a tree in the top of a tree. Mm -hmm. And then they saw UFOs. And the UFOs were away, and then creatures came that were luminous. And they stayed there all night. They came. After that, they came to me and uh, and told me the story, and I was very surprised because they were very young. The story was very consistent, and I decided to go. Mm -hmm. This was two years after that event. Uh, the, the original one happened on the night of the 17th of May, uh, 1997. Uh, and I went back there on May 1999. Yeah. And at that night, uh, on the, the 27th of May, 2 o'clock in the morning, 2 or 5, as to be exact, they, they woke me up and told me, what is that? Ask me. Uh, and then I said, well, I tried to record it, I tried to photograph it, it didn't work. But I saw two creatures moving, uh, which were phosphorescent. Mm -hmm. uh, the guide who was with us and was from the area was uh, so afraid that he went back to sleep and he was making jokes about us and, and uh, yeah. all the, the merchants are coming and they're going to take you and things mm -hmm. like that, stupid things. And, yeah. and at that moment I said, I want to ask this man to see what he thinks about things. And he was, you know, and with his sleeping bag just covering his face. He was Next morning I said, what was that? Uh, and he said, well, I don't know, that's a revelation of God. And I said, no. That was an animal, probably a deer, no, what a deer. That was a, a lion, a, a jaguar or something, no, he said. <laughs> that was something else that was very different. Uh, and, uh, were they walking upright? They were yeah, 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 they were moving yeah. and you can see they were small, you can see their eyes were very bright. Mm -hmm. They were 70 meters away from us and the field was very rough, mm -hmm. it was impossible to walk to where they were all the rocks you know was mm -hmm. very very dangerous uh, and I mean dangerous then mm -hmm. we didn't do that besides you start doing that and they disappear and then you're in the middle yeah. and then you don't know what to do but yeah we saw it and you said that you tried to photograph it I tried right? to photograph I tried mm -hmm. to videotape and, and, and nothing worked and nothing then, worked I mean it was for me I'm not claiming I'm not saying I'm not going public I'm telling you I tell whatever whoever asked me uh, because the experience was real. Yes. And if you want to believe that this phenomenon is crazy, if you want to believe that this phenomenon is just for fool people, you have your right to do that. But I tell you something, you're mm -hmm. wrong. And I know you are wrong because I experienced that event. I know that And feeling. even though I didn't obtain one of the most important evidence of my life, mm -hmm. uh, for me was very important because it really helped me to change not to change, to confirm what I mm -hmm. thought. So do you feel like since you've been involved with the UFO phenomenon that it has changed your life? And how, how has it changed your life? Well, I see that uh, 
things in a more universal perspective. Mm -hmm. I see things uh, more related to the future and to other generations. And I try to help as much as possible to protect the environment. You know, I think uh, you have to really learn to be citizen of a bigger spectrum, of a bigger uh, plan, mm -hmm. because uh, I think we are very, very, uh, how do you say, egocentric. Mm -hmm. We are, you know, uh, very narrow on our view. And I think we have to change that. And I think this possibility of this meeting with these creatures would be just that. That possibility to, to really mm -hmm. to change the future of human beings. Because the way we are now, in 40, 50 years, mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying nothing is going to be here, but life is going to be terrible, miserable. Mm -hmm. And that's my, 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 my grand... Uh, you know, that's mm -hmm. the world, and I do not agree with that. Right. When you travel the world and give your uh, give talks as a presenter, um, is there a particular message you're trying to get across to people that that exactly. in itself mm -hmm. that we have to be transcendental, that right. we have a big opportunity here. Mm -hmm. I tell people, the biggest crisis is not the economical crisis. The biggest crisis is not the change of, of uh, weather, the change of climate, the climate change. Mm. The biggest crisis is the extinction of the animals, right. of the, the ways of life, the different forms of life, because that's forever. Mm. Uh, we have to stop that as soon as possible. We have to keep this world for better times. And we have to be more self-sufficient, more sustainable. Uh, and if we can do that, then uh, we're going to complete our mission. Uh, I've seen many in the last years, many signs in the sky and on the field, and many of them are crosses like the, Christ, the cross of Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not saying this is religious, I'm saying that is a, a message, a symbol right. that remember us to, to love uh, our neighbor as we love ourselves. If we could do that simple statement, mm -hmm. if we could love mm -hmm. my neighbor, my friend, the way I love myself, exactly, would be so different. Uh, to learn how to give to others, you know, mm -hmm. uh, there is this uh, phrase uh, by a Mexican writer that says that. Uh, when you are dead, people that never heard your name will advance on the rhythm of your thoughts. It doesn't matter that they don't know who you are, if you are able to change the life of others. Right. And that's what is really important. And that's why I investigate and I put my time in this. Many people think that was a mistake, it was a mistake to, to dedicate so much time to this. But I think uh, I've been able, and uh, we have been able, because we are a group, to put uh, our little apportation to, to change the mind of many around the world. Mm -hmm. And that's what I, I think is, at this moment, very, very important. And tell me about your group. How many people do you have working with you on this? Uh, in this organization, at least 30 people. And the name of the organization? It's Tercer Milenio. Third Milenio. And that's also your website, right? It's my website. Uh, mm -hmm. it's my, it's, uh, well, my, my website is uh, ovnis.tv. Okay. That's one of them. And mm -hmm. I have another high mouse and dot TV. I have a page for the Creature of, Met uh, creature of Metepec. Mm -hmm. And it's that creatureofmetepec.com. And you can read all the investigation in English with subtitles. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have also uh, YouTube. Uh, slash Tercer Millennium, where I present uh, my television shows. Mm -hmm. Many of them are also subtitled. Mm -hmm. You want to check them because uh, I think this is the only show in the world that presents the news around this phenomenon. Right. Many shows around the world present events, but we present new events every week. 
and that's why we are very well informed of what is happening around the world at any single moment. Thank you. Jaime, thank you very much for thank being you. my guest today. Thank you, Dave.